Hello. Hello and welcome to day two. Um, as with yesterday, if you are signed in to YouTube, you can <clears throat> say hi in the little chat box. And if you have any questions, you can ask them there too. So I'll give it just a couple more minutes. We've got some people joining. And please do say hi if you can. I'd love to see who's out there. <laughs> These are so cute, aren't they? <laughs> they, um, I, we had, I was young in the time of Cabbage Patch dolls and they remind me of the Cabbage Patch doll socks and shoes. All right. Hi, Lori. Hi, Fiber Chronicles. What's your name? Fiber Chronicles. If you feel like telling me, you don't have to. I know we all have uh, our internet handles sometimes and my brain doesn't always work to put them together. Hi, Bonnie. Nice to see you all here. Um, I, um, I was frantically getting my sock ready for class and I hope uh, y'all weren't also frantically getting ready for class. Um, I woke up this morning and decided I needed to stress clean the bathrooms. Hi, Ariel. <clears throat> um, and then our washing machine's broken, so of course. Um, so I was talking to the neighbors about figuring out how to safely drop off a load of towels for them to wash for us. So exciting times over here in social distance land. Um, so yesterday we started our little socks and uh, we went over kind of what what the components are of a sock and why we use certain needles and yarns and stuff. Hi, Laura. Um, and today, and, and I'm sorry, and also we started our socks. So we started our sock toe and we did all of our toe increases after doing Judy's Magic Cast On. And then um, we talked about doing the gusset increases and, um, I'm thinking we the the plan was to get past our gusset increases so we could concentrate on the heel turn today. So does anybody, before we get started on that, does anybody have any questions about any of the components that we covered in class number one? And if you do, like I said, you can type it into the, um, the little chat bar next to the screen. And if you, if a question pops into your head while I'm teaching, um, you know, just type it whenever you want and that's fine. Um, so if we're looking at our pattern, um, remember that we're following the numbers for the smallest size and we have gotten through the shape gusset section and we should have worked across our established, um, work as established across front of needle stitches. So we should have knitted across the top of our foot and we should be ready to work on the bottom of our foot. So if you have done all of that, <clears throat> then you have a little, a little toe taco that looks like this. So this is the front, and you'll see that we still have that little stitch marker we placed so we know what our front um, stitches are. And then our back looks like this, and we have our original 14 stitches bracketed by a stitch marker with five stitches on the outside of each stitch marker. I wanna show you these stitch markers too because this is one of Maria's newest sets. And they're little boba tea stitch markers and they're, I don't even like boba tea because texture, but my goodness, they're the cutest stitch markers ever. My kids totally wanna to steal them because of course they do. Um, so what we're going to do today, and this is, one of the times when I wish so badly we were together because um, when I'm teaching a class, I have a bunch of these little mini socks ready. And so I have um, enough so that at least there's one for every two people. Um, the coupon code for the markers is distant together. And it's, there are two T's next to each other. So it's distant together, all shoved into one word. 
Um, so um, yeah, so when I'm at class with people, I have these little packets. So it's basically what we've done for class today. And then people can practice on a small sock can practice the heel turn and then I rip it out and give it back to them and then they can practice again and again and again. Hi, Sue. Good to see you, Sue. Um, and so I think that's, excuse me, very helpful because then you can practice the technique again and again. And it's what I'm going to, Sue knows this because Sue took a class from me very recently. Um, I really uh, do suggest ripping out your work and redoing it and ripping out your work and redoing it, especially when you're doing something on a small scale like this, because um, that's how you learn. Like we talked about yesterday. And I even um, asked my daughter, what is the term for that kind of learning? And it is a growth mindset. So they have a growth mindset where you are fine you know, you're kind of fine messing up because you know that it's it's giving you room to grow. And it also, I think, um, takes away some of the ego of learning something, you know, where it doesn't really matter if you don't learn it at first, because really, the more you have to work to remember it, the more it stays in your head. So that's why I really like people to rip out their work and redo it, right, Sue? <laughs> okay, so, um, so today, we have our little our little sake, and we have worked our way across the top of foot stitches, the FN stitches, and then we're going to turn our work and we're ready to work on the back side. So if we look at our turn heel instructions on page three, second column, it says turn heel, work the heel flat, back and forth, not in the round. So we're just going to be working on our back of needle, sti back of needle stitches. Row one, RS, that means right side, <clears throat> knit to first gusset marker, slip marker, knit to two stitches before next gusset marker, and wrap and turn. So what that means is that we're going to knit these first five stitches that we increased, then we're gonna slip this first marker, and then we're gonna knit until we are two stitches before our next gusset marker. So I'm going to do that right now. I will turn. So, and if you want, you can do this with me or you can watch and then do it after I'm done. So I'm to that gusset marker, that first gusset marker. So I'm slipping that marker and then I'm gonna knit. So I'm knitting until I have one, two stitches before my next little marker. So I've got one, two stitches, marker, and then the five gusset stitches I increased. And it says wrap and turn. So to do a wrap and turn on the knit side, your yarn, because you've been knitting, your yarn naturally is um, in the back of your work. So you're gonna grab your yarn and you're gonna move it to the front of your work, just like that. And then you're gonna take your right needle and you're gonna grab the next need, the next stitch off of the left needle, slip it onto the right needle. Then you're gonna take your yarn, you're gonna put it to the back of the work again. You're going to slip that stitch back to the left needle. So now you've wrapped and now you need to turn. So to turn, you're literally turning your work so the inside of your sock is facing you. Does that make sense? Also have my favorite purple lipstick on today. Okay, so now we're on row two of the heel. It says WS for wrong side because we're looking at the inside of the sock. We're looking at all of our pearl bumps. For the first time since we started knitting. Awesome, Lori, thank you. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna purl to two stitches before the gusset marker. So again, we've got this wrap stitch right here that's now on our right needle. And then we're gonna purl So 
So we're purling 10 stitches for this size sock, but we're purling until we have two stitches, our gusset marker, and then the five gusset stitches. <clears throat> and because we've been purling, our yarn is naturally in the front of our work. So to do our wrap, we're going to move our yarn to the back of our work. We're gonna take our right needle, grab the next stitch and slip it onto the right needle from the left needle. Bring our yarn back to the front of our work and then move that stitch back to our left needle. And so that has been wrapped. And if you kind of look closely and see, you've just got this loop of yarn that is wrapped around the two legs of that next stitch. So we've wrapped. Now to finish this row, we are gonna turn. So you're literally turning your work so your stockinette side is now on the outside. And so that is, we've done our first pair of wrap and turns. Any questions? I do want to say that as we're looking at this, you had one stitch, I sometimes call it the lone wolf stitch, um, that is right next to the marker that we haven't wrapped. So we've got this one stitch that's just hanging out there. So we don't wrap the stitch that's next to the marker, we wrap the stitch that's inside that stitch. And so what we're gonna do now is Row three, knit to two stitches before wrapped stitch. I know, Sue, I know. Um, as you know, because you're in the Pacific Northwest too, the um, lighting is not very good. Today, um, if you turn up the, um, maybe turn up the light on your monitor, you might be able to see it a little better. I'm using a bright yarn today in the hopes that we can see it a little better. Hi, Rebecca. Okay, so to do row three, we're going to knit until we're two stitches before the wrap stitch from the previous row. So, let me, let's look really closely here. Okay, so this is the wrap stitch. Do you see that it's wrapped right here? And it's pushed up against this one. So this is kind of its little partner stitch. And then this is the stitch we're gonna, oh good Sue, um, this is the stitch we're gonna knit to. So let me show you one more time after I knit that stitch. Wrapping the stitch causes a little hole right here. Do you see that little hole that I'm kind of sticking my fingernail through? So wrapping the stitch causes this little hole right here. And then the next, the stitch that's right next to it is just uh, naturally pushed, kind of pushed in next to it. So it's a little, like a little pair of stitches. And this becomes more apparent the more you do this and the more comfortable you are with um, seeing what you've done with sock knitting. And once you have a couple pairs, you'll see. And then this one right here is gonna be the next stitch that we wrap. So again, to wrap knitwise, we are gonna move our yarn to the front. We're going to use our right needle to grab that next stitch on the left needle and slip it over. Then we're going to push our yarn back to the back and then we're gonna slip that stitch back to the left needle. So we've wrapped and put it right up here so you can see. So this stitch right here has been wrapped and look at it, I'm pulling it nice and loosely so you can see the yarn wrapped around it. And then this is a stitch that has not had anything done with it. And then this is a wrapped stitch. So we've wrapped on round three or row three, and now we're gonna turn. So we're gonna be looking again at the inside of the sock. We're gonna see our purl stitches <clears throat> and we're going to purl to two stitches before the wrapped stitch. So again, this is what, you're, what it's gonna look like. Those are the stitches you've just purled. 
This is our wrap stitch from earlier. I'm gonna pull the stitch marker on the front so you can see. This is the lone stitch that we didn't do anything to. This is the first wrap stitch we did. This is that wrap stitch's buddy. And then this is two stitches before that stitch, which is also the stitch we are going to wrap. And I just said stitch so many times. Um, so wrapping on the purl side, our yarn is naturally in the front because we've been purling. So we're gonna move our yarn to the back. We're going to take our right needle. We're gonna grab that next stitch. We're gonna slip it onto the right needle. We're gonna bring our yarn back from the back to the front. And then we're gonna slip the stitch we just wrapped back to the left needle. And so we've wrapped for row four. Now we turn. And to turn, again, you turn it so you're now looking at the outside of your sock aka the knit stitches, stockinette stitch. How does that make sense for you? Does it make sense? I know it's not, again, the easiest to see, um, but that is how you do a wrap and turn. And so whenever you're asked to do a wrap and turn um, for anything, that is the kind of traditional way to do it. There are other ways to do, awesome. Um, there are other ways to do short rows and uh, wrap and turn is just one of them. It's, it's, I think it's the most kind of basic, traditional way to do it. Um, but you can do things like German short rows. My, um, my dream boat sock pattern that I just released in February for parts of the lots of socks knit along has German short rows and I explain how to do them in the pattern. And it's a really fun way and very different way to do short rows, um, but I really enjoy it. And maybe maybe I'll do a little class on that too, because that might be super fun too. Um, because I, I think kind of getting that technique was, uh, I, I really enjoyed it and I would like to share it. And it was one of the classes I was gonna float for some of our local yarn shops that I teach at, but who knows when that's gonna happen, right? Okay, so as we look at our pattern, again, we're on page three, turn heel. We've worked through rows one through four, and now we're gonna follow the instructions to work rows three and four until you have two unwrapped stitches in the middle of your heel. So what that means is we're gonna do our row three again, where we knit to two stitches before our wrap stitch. See, here's our wrap stitch right here. And then we're gonna wrap and turn. And then we're gonna purl to two stitches before, oops. What am I doing? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I confused myself. Okay, and then we're gonna turn and we are there. So because this is such a small little sock, there aren't many wrap and turns to do, which is why I highly recommend you um, rip it out and redo it. Um, Cause it's really, uh, you know, important to do that repetition. So we are now on page four, um, which is also the page I just blotted my lipstick on. <laughs> So, um, so it says next row, right side, knit to last stitch before gusset marker, working wraps as you come to them. Removing gusset marker, knit the last heel stitch together with, together through the back loop with the first gusset stitch. Um, so if you are unsure of how, you know, as you go forward, as you're working this on your own, if you're unsure of how to work wrap stitches, there are instructions in the pattern notes section on page two on how to do that but I will show you today how to do that. And also how to recognize the two, what, what it means that there are two unwrapped stitches. For other sizes, there will be four, six. Um, Laura, that's a great question, Laura. Row gauge is important for getting socks to fit, particularly toe up socks. Um, so I, I'm gonna take a little break and talk about that then, because I think it is really important to keep in mind um, obviously for this little sock, it's not super important, but if you look at your handout on page 
four of your handout, um, there is a little formula to help you figure out if your row gauge is markedly different than the row gauge in the pattern. Um, when you're working a, a cuff down sock, row gauge is not as vitally important because if your row gauge is off and your sock is too short or too long after you finished it, the only thing you have to do is take out the toe, which is, you know, I mean, it's work, but it's not that many, it's not that much work and make your foot longer or shorter. If row gauge is different, markedly different for a toe up sock because of how this is structured, where we knit to a certain length um, measured in inches or centimeters, and then we start doing our heel increases, and then we do all of our heel increases, and then we do our heel. Uh, if your row gauge is way off, then you're going to have a lot to rip out if it's if it doesn't fit you. Uh, does that make sense? I know I babbled a little bit with that. Um, so row gauge is, I mean, stitch gauge is always important no matter what you're working on. And some for some projects, row gauge is less important. But for socks, for toe-up socks, when you're doing a gusset, it is very important. So, um, a, you know, a teensy bit off, you're going to be able to kind of futz it like you are with anything. But uh, you really want to try to aim for the row gauge to be the same as the pattern calls for because all of the calculations in the pattern, you know, were taken based on the row gauge that's given in the pattern. Okay, so when we talk about how many unworked stitches to pay attention to um, before uh, working your wrap stitches, what we're talking about are these stitches. And right here, they're two and they're bracketed by this wrap stitch that you just did on the purl side and this wrap stitch that you did on the knit side. Now you can see as you look at this that this is our this is our lone stitch next to our stitch marker, right? That little lone wolf stitch we talked about. This is the first pair of wrap stitches, this is the second pair of wrap stitches, and this is the third pair of wrap stitches. And then on this side, same thing. This is our little lone wolf stitch. This is our first pair of wrap stitches. This is our second pair of wrap stitches. And then this is our third wrap stitch. So this stitch right here would be its partner if we were continuing to go forward and work more wrap stitches. But you can see, and that would have pulled this stitch so it's, it kind of snugs up next to it. <clears throat> so let me find my pattern because here we are with our next row on the top of page four. So it says, knit to last stitch before gusset marker, working wraps as you come to them. So we're gonna knit those two stitches. Um, yes, Laura, I totally suggest watching in the round if you are doing a sock because you're gonna be knitting primarily in the round. And a lot of us have different, um, different row gauges when we're knitting stockinette in the round than we do when we're knitting stockinette back and forth. And at the end of class, if I don't remember, remind me, and I will um, talk about a technique to swatch in the round where you don't have to knit an entire tube. Um, it can be a little messy, but it's a good technique. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna knit these two stitches that we left in the middle. And the next stitch we're coming to is a wrapped stitch. See right there, it's a wrap stitch. So in order to work that wrap stitch, we're gonna take our right needle tip, I wanna make sure you can see this, and we're gonna grab the wrap. So we're gonna grab the, oh, here, let me see if I can turn this a little bit. Um, we're gonna grab the wrap in the back. Let me push the, sorry everybody. The yarn's all super ramen because it's been used so many times. Um, so we grab the loop, the back loop, and we put it up on the left needle. So it's sitting on the left needle right next to the stitch it was wrapped around. Oops, sorry. Um, so this is the wrap stitch, this one that's lighter. And then the hot yellow one is the stitch it was wrapped around. And then we're gonna knit those together through the back loop.
And so now we have our next little pair right here. And so we're going to knit the next stitch. It's just a normal stitch, so we just knit it. And then again, let me see if I can do this like this. Um, then we're gonna take our right needle tip and we're gonna grab the loop of the wrap and we're gonna bring it up and pop it up onto our left needle. And then, I don't know if I can do this like this. Okay, then we're gonna knit them together through the back loop. Like so. And then we have another pair that we're gonna work and we're gonna do the exact same thing. But we're gonna knit the first stitch. I'm gonna do it, well, I'm gonna try to do this again, like this. So we're gonna use our right needle tip. We're gonna grab that stitch, I'm gonna pop it up onto the needle so it's sitting next to the stitch it was wrapped around. And then we are going to knit them together through the back loop. And that's how you work right side wrap stitches. And as you can see, you can see that they're, you, know, you can they look a little different, right? But the holes are closed. And you have a pretty smooth line. And you can see your little heel turn right there. Look how cute that is. It's just a little, little teensy, little teensy pocket for a little teensy heel. Um, and so now what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the gusset marker and we're gonna knit the last heel stitch together through the back loop with the first gusset sense. Oh good Sue, I'm glad it's making sense for you. So in order to do that, we need to get this gusset marker out of there. So I just slip the next stitch, take the gusset marker out, drop it, slip the next stitch back onto the left needle and then we're gonna knit those two stitches together through the back loop. So we have just worked away one gusset stitch. So we have four gusset stitches left over here. And the last part of this row says turn. So again, we're gonna turn. So we have the inside of the sock facing us. <clears throat> Thanks, Laura. I'm pretty proud of myself that I was able to do that backwards. <laughs> I have not tried that before. Um, okay, so next row, wrong side. Slip one purl wise. So we just keep our yarn in the front of the work. We slip one purl wise. Now we're gonna purl to the last stitch before gusset marker, working wraps as you come to them. Again, the instructions for this are written out in the pattern notes, but I will, um, and it, you basically are doing the same thing on the purl side as you do on the knit side, but just a little different because it's purl. Um, so we're gonna purl our way over to the first wrap stitch. So this is the first wrap stitch right here. And we're gonna do the same thing where we are gonna take our right needle, we're gonna grab the back of the loop of the wrap, and we're gonna put it up and onto the needle. So again, we have our wrap stitch. This is the stitch, and this is the wrap, and we have them sitting next to each other. And then we're gonna purl those together, do a regular purl two together on those. And then we're going to purl the next stitch because that's the buddy stitch for the next wrap stitch. And then again, get my Romani yarn. Okay, so again, we're going to grab the loop. Right, we're going to grab that loop. We're going to pop it up and onto the needle. And then we're going to purl those two together. Okay, then we have one more. So we are gonna purl the next stitch because it's just a regular old stitch. And then again, we're going to grab the wrap, pop it up and onto the left needle and then purl those together. 
Now what we have is Lone Wolf Stitch, cute little Boba Tea Stitch Marker, and five gusset stitches. So just like on our right side, we're going to just slip that next stitch, take our little stitch marker out and drop it. Put the stitch we just slipped back onto the left needle and then we're gonna purl those two together. And now we've got a turned heel and I would like you when you get to this point to take a moment to admire what you've done because you have turned the corner on your knitting. So you've gone from knitting this way to knitting this way with that little heel turn. Look at that little, you should be able to see the little heel cup right there. Not that Cabbage Patch Kids have heels really, but um, yeah, so you've done that. So now you're gonna be working your heel flap. And so um, there are a couple of different options for your heel flap. I generally, um, you know, uh, tell students that if they, I don't know, let me, let me just tell you what the options are. Um, so you can do a stockinette heel flap, which is just stockinette stitch. It's easier. And it's what I definitely recommend for this, for these little, um, these little socks, because then you can just concentrate on decreasing and not have to worry about slipping any stitches or anything. Um, as far as wearability goes on adult socks, stockinette is not as ideal for a couple of different reasons. The first of which is that um, the heel is one of the areas of a sock that wears out fastest. So um, having slip stitches helps to make it stronger. So if you just do a stockinette, it's not gonna be quite as strong. Um, and the second one is that a slip stitch heel flap kind of is like ribbing, so it kind of um, pulls the fabric in, so it helps it fit a little better, where stockinette is just stockinette, so it's just the size that it is, and it doesn't um, pull in like ribbing does. So that's stockinette, and that's what I recommend for your little uh, demo sock. Um, but then you can also do a slip stitch heel flap, which uh, has a lot of strength because you're doing slip stitches, and it also pulls in a little more and helps to fit if you find that your sock is a little bit loose here, this will help. Um, so as you look, as you're working your regular socks, um, you can read instructions for either one of those. And you're still working flat because you're decreasing away your gusset stitches. So you're still only working on your back needle stitches. Um, so what we're gonna do for this one is the stockinette heel flap. So what you do is, you're always gonna slip your first stitch and um, you know you always slip purlwise with yarn and back unless you're told otherwise in most every pattern. So you're gonna slip your stitch and then you're going to knit over to one stitch before your gap. Have you all noticed that since we're not supposed to touch our faces anymore, our faces are a lot itchier than they used to be. <laughs> Try so hard. Okay, so I have knitted over to one stitch before my gap. And you can see the gap right here from decreasing my stitches before. And I have four stitches on the kind of outside of my gap. And those are the gusset stitches I haven't decreased yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit together through the back loop. So through the back loop of your legs of your stitches, the kind of knit together over that gap. And then you're gonna turn. And we're gonna be working row two of our stockinette heel flap. So we're gonna slip one. And this one, the yarn's in front because it had been in front. Um, so slip one, and then we're gonna purl to one stitch before the gap. All right, so again, it's gonna look like this, where you have this gap right here, 
I'm going to have those four gusset stitches and this stitch and this stitch are the ones that you're going to purl together. And so you're just going to do a purl two together on those two stitches. Okay. And that is what you do. So you're going to keep working those two rows until you are, you've eaten up all of those gusset stitches. And then you're going to do, you're going to be on the beginning of your back needle because you've just done your purl two together. And so you're going to slip one and you're going to knit to the end of your back needle. And then you're going to be back in the round. Um, so once you've done that, tomorrow is um, really mostly about Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Um, because once you've done that, you're going to be working in the round once again. You're going to knit one round. And then you're going to do a knit two purl two ribbing for one inch. So not many rounds at all. And then you can go ahead and hold off when you get to that. And tomorrow we'll do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. If you have any questions as you work things through, um, you can bring them to class tomorrow. Um, and then real quickly, I'm going to um, talk a little bit about swatching in the round and a good way to swatch in the round if you don't want to make a, an entire tube. Um, this, I will say that this can serve as a swatch if you want it to, um, although it's not big enough for kind of an official swatch, but it'll give you an idea if you're close or not to the stitch and row gauge you want to have. Um, <clears throat> but one way to swatch in the round is to um, figure out what, you know, kind of what space you want to measure. So um, usually you want at least four inches, right? And then you want four inches plus some um, selvage space on the sides. So I always kind of figure out what the pattern calls for, what gauge the pattern calls for. You know, if it's like 20 stitches over four inches. Um, and then I would add two stitches on each side for the selvage, that would be 24 stitches. And then I would also add another couple stitches just so I have a little leeway. So if I'm trying to figure out my 20 stitch, you know, 20 stitch gauge, I would probably cast on 26 stitches or so. So. Um, so what you would do to do this kind of in the round without being in the round knitting is you would to still do your garter top, you know, your garter, a couple rows of garter back and forth, and then um, knit across the front. And then, and you wanna be at, you have to be on circular needles. Sorry, I'm kind of babbling, but you wanna be on circular needles for this. So you're gonna knit across the front and then you're going to just, it's almost like making an I cord. You're gonna just let your yarn drape down in the back and then knit across the front and let it drape down in the back. Um, so you're gonna have just these kind of loops of yarn hanging. You don't need them too long, but you definitely want them at least as long, long enough so that when you, um, so you're not like pulling, pulling your swatch super tight. Um, and what that does is it allows you to have a good kind of center, place of in the round knitting where you're just knitting, knitting, knitting to measure. Does that make sense? Hi, Susan. Hello, hello. Um, so I don't know if you, yeah, so uh, I don't know if that makes sense, Laura. But um, you can also Google, you know, just like with everything, you can Google um, swatching in the round techniques and um, it's messy. The sides look messy. Is it a little confusing, Sue? Um, yeah, so it's a little messy for sure, especially on the sides, but that's why you wanna have those extra stitches on the side um, to kind of give you some leeway. Um, but yeah, you can Google that, Sue, to see what I'm talking about. But basically what you're doing is you're knitting across and then you're draping your yarn. And so you're, you know, you're knitting, and then you're draping your yarn and then you're pulling your needle through again. So you're always knitting on the front side. Like when you do an I-cord, you know, when you do an I-cord, Google will help. You're always knitting on the front side and you're moving your, you're moving the whole stitches instead of turning. Um, but that's a good way to swatch in the round if you don't feel like making a tube. So um, let me just check the class syllabus for the day and make sure we talked about everything. We learned how to work short rows. 
we made a little sweet, cute, adorable heel cup and we decreased those heel stitches away. So I think we are there. Um, so tomorrow, your homework is to do the heel turn. I would please suggest doing it more than once. Um, uh, Laura, you're so sweet. Um, and um, make sure you're working in the round once again and you've done all of your ribbing. Um, if you do wanna pay for the class, yes, Laura, there is a way to pay for it. I have a um, PayPal, my PayPal is Shannon SQ at gmail.com. So if you, you know, I'm not asking for payment for this, um, but if you find that it's super useful and you have a little extra money in these hard times and, um, you know, want to, you are welcome to, you know, I'm so Midwestern, um, you're welcome to pay for the class if you want. So Shannon SQ at Gmail. And thank you, Laura. Um, everybody, I will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off and um, bring any questions you have. So thank you so much and have a good Friday. Bye-bye.